Good morning and welcome to Online Worship with Webster Groves Christian Church, Disciples of Christ and Memorial Boulevard Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. I'm Pastor Jeff Moore and I'm glad that you decided to join us this morning. I hope that you've got communion elements ready so that you can share with us in the Lord's Supper and that you'll sing along with the hymns and pray along with the prayers. We're glad you're with us today. Good morning. I'm Larry Doss. Happy Sunday. And I'm Linda Doss, part of the interim team at Memorial Boulevard. Hi, I'm Gary Love. And I'm Kay Love. We want to welcome you to Webster Groves Christian Church. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, great provider. Bread nourishes and sustains life. Facing another wave of this pandemic and many other social ills, we are in need of your sustenance. Jesus is the bread of life. He is the living bread who gave his flesh for the life of the world. He provides all that we need for eternal life. Let your Holy Spirit live in and through us. Let us, through word and sacrament, truly encounter your Son and be transformed. He satisfies our hunger and thirst. He is enough. In our Lord Jesus, we will make it through this time of fear and uncertainty. With faith in you, let us all confidently partake of the bread of life and live. It is in the blessed name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. You know, I just got back from a motorcycle trip. I rode for many days to many places. In fact, I'll bet you can see that I got sunburned. You can see how it's all red on my nose and my cheeks. Look at how it's not red right here where I was wearing my goggles, and right here where there's a chin strap for my helmet. I need to do better about sunscreen next time. As I was riding, along the Mississippi River in Iowa and Illinois and Missouri and Wisconsin, I was thinking about where God is. The Psalm that we read for this morning, Psalm 130, has the psalmist crying out to God from the depths. Out of the depths I cry to you, they write. The depths can be a place, I suppose, a place far away from where we are now, a place way far down. And the psalmist knows that they can cry for God even from that place. But the depths is also a feeling. When you're feeling really down and low, sad, you can also call to God from that place. And from either one, from a place that seems far away from what you're used to, or from feelings, maybe feelings of sadness or loneliness, maybe you even have feelings of anger, or rejection. Maybe you're feeling hurt. You can always call to God like the psalmist does. And the psalmist tells us something else. They have hope. Hope because God hears us. Hope because God loves us. Hope because God is there for us. Whether we're far away from where we are, or whether our feelings aren't where we'd like them to be. Sometimes it's really hard to feel sad or lonely. Sometimes it's really difficult feeling hurt. Those are real feelings. And God is really there. And we can cry out to God. We can let God know how we feel. And hopefully, as family and friends and members of the church together, we can remember not only does God hear us, but we can hear one another. We can care for each other. When we're feeling hurt or down or low, we can listen and care when others are feeling hurt or down or low. My hope for you today, however you're feeling, wherever you are, is that you'll remember that God is a God to whom we can cry out, that God is here for us, and that we, with God's love in our lives, can be here for one another. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your love, a love that does not go away from us, even when we're very sad or lonely or hurt or scared, even when we travel far away from our homes. We can cry out to you and you hear us. And thank you for reminding us to be people of hope and asking us through Jesus to share that hope with each other. And we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading is from John chapter 6, verse 35, and then verses 41 through 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, 
and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Good morning, church. In today's scripture passage of John chapter 6, verses 35, 41 through 51, Jesus makes a bold statement. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What we see in the verses to come, those around Jesus become angry with his words. They question, who is this man that he should proclaim that he is the bread of life? They wondered how can Jesus make the claim that he's the bread of life and that he came down from heaven? Is he not the son of Joseph, whose father and mother that they knew? Jesus simply replies with, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by God who sent me. I will raise that person up on the last day. I am amazed that Jesus stands firm yet humbly in his God-given identity and authority while the people are questioning him. Jesus standing firm in his identity in the midst of the uncertainty of the people is the focal point of today's sermon. It's the focus because even in our questioning of the goodness of God and our, in our uncertainty, Jesus is the bread that gives eternal life that sustains us. Now, many of us have heard the story and the life story of Jesus and his ministry. And for those who haven't, I'll give you the Sparks Notes version. So Jesus is betrayed by one of his disciples. He turned, he's turned over to Roman rule, goes on trial, is crucified, and died upon a cross. Now, some say that Jesus died for our sins, while others believe that his death was one elicited by corrupt government. And I'm not here today to debate um, theology. If you want to do that, just catch me during the week. But I do want us um, to think about this because sometimes we get stuck at the cross. But I want to tell you that church, he ain't there. Um, Jesus not only gets back up and is resurrected, um, but he has all powers in his hand and he is sitting on the right side of the throne. And his life and death is one that brought liberation for all. And even after Jesus defeats death, um, those who encountered him during his time of ministry, including those who were closest to him, still questioned and had uncertainty of Jesus' identity and authority. And despite all of that, Jesus still fulfilled his purpose, which was to be the bread of life. So what does all of that have to do with John 6, this passage that we're looking at today? So let's go on to the next few verses. Um, Jesus tells them that it is written in the prophets, he's referring to the Old Testament, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from God comes to me. Not that anyone has seen God, has seen God except the one who is from God. He has seen God. Jesus is telling the people that there is no way around acknowledging him as the bread of life. Jesus is a part of the plan to eternity. Whether you believe that you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior in your heart to be a part of this plan, or that Jesus is a perfect example for uh, what it means for believers to follow in order to get to eternity, or maybe you're a person who believes both in, I don't know, but Jesus is the vessel that God has given us to receive greater in this life and the next. And in verse 47 and 48, he says, very truly, I tell you, whoever, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. 
moving forward, Jesus says, your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. Jesus is telling the people that the physical bread that they um, that has been a part of the history of how God has provided for them is not substantial. It's not what's going to keep them long term. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I and the bread I will give for my life of the world is my flesh. What Jesus is telling them is that. Um, to be in covenant with him is to be in covenant with God. And that is how eternal life comes about. So what does it mean to be in covenant with Jesus? It means to be in agreement or an alliance with God and trusting God's word um, is true even in times of uncertainty. It requires that we be committed to a life of biblical justice which means caring for the poor and marginalized. It means being good stewards of the earth. It means welcoming those who are foreigners. It means caring for those who are widowed and orphaned. It means being affirming of those who may identify a part of the LGBTQIA plus community. It means not just saying that black lives matter, but living those words out in action. It means to honor the people whose land we live on. It means to speak out and deconstruct unjust systems that causes people to be othered. It means to live like Jesus, a life that is committed to the transformation of all. Now, I know that all of my sermons, if you've heard me preach before, I kind of repeat the same spiel. However, I want us to never get comfortable with romanticizing the idea of justice or a better world, but um, to move into action. Because what we see from the life of Jesus is that Jesus wasn't just talk. He was a willing vessel that moved in purpose for God's power to be displayed in the earth. And the scripture, scripture passage tells us that all who follow Jesus and take part of the heavenly bread are sustained forever. And my hope is that every time I open my mouth that the spirit is moving and planting seeds in our hearts that uh, moves us out of our comfort and uh, stagnation and into purpose and into movement. Now, you may not like this, but our comfort is not more important than our calling from God, church. It's time that we stop idolizing our comfort and becoming and remaining stagnant. Now, I do want to acknowledge that at times our comfort is rooted in uncertainty. Family, I know that with everything that is happening in our world, that it's really hard to imagine a solid world where there is peace, acceptance, justice, and all the things that God has promised. Especially the things that God has promised for God's people. It's hard to keep faith when everything around us looks like the opposite of what God had promised. That's why it's essential for us to walk um, by faith and not by sight. And that's why it's important that we grasp um, the words that Jesus spoke at the end of verse 51. He says that the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus is telling the people in this passage that those who follow him are covered. And today, we are reminded that Jesus has already, already made the ultimate sacrifice for us um, that will sustain us in the times of uncertainty. As we let those words get deep within our heart and spirit, we must stand firm on the promises of God. We have to stand firm in our call as the church, and we have to stand firm in our identity and purpose. Even when we are uncertain if God will come through, even if when we're uncertain if things will change, if COVID will go away, if people will be able to stay in their homes and not be evicted, whatever it may be, we have to stand firm in the promise of God. The scripture tells us that God is not a human being, that God should lie or immortal, that God should change God's mind. Has God promised and will God not do it? 
Has God spoken and will not God fulfill it? One of my favorite hymns growing up in church um, that so often um, the, the more seasoned saints will sing um, went something like this. I'm not going to sing because uh, my allergies are destroying me right now. But the words say, hold on to God's hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold on to God's hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Family, we are fooling ourselves if we think that we can do this thing called life without the sustenance of the bread of life, which is Jesus himself. Through him and the power of God, um, we have been given everything that we need for a better life here and in eternity. So may we forever take part in the bread of life, which is Jesus. May we be filled. May we hunger no more and may we thirst no more. And may we go out and be the church that we are called to be. Amen and Ashe. Our congregations continue in mission and ministry. If you'd like to become a follower of Jesus Christ or become a member of either Memorial Boulevard Christian Church or Webster Groves Christian Church, please contact us. We'd be delighted to talk with you and pray with you. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, as we come to your table today, we want to thank you and praise you for this opportunity to gather together as fellow believers. And Lord, right now we just ask that you would bless this loaf and bless this cup. And Lord, please be with each and every one of us as we celebrate communion together. Lord, all these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen.
Dear God, we come today remembering your son, Jesus Christ. How as he was sharing a meal with his disciples, he took the bread and the cup from the table and said the bread and the cup represented his body and his blood, which he would shed for their sins. As we come around the table, whether with family or with friends or even alone, let us remember how Jesus taught us that we should love and care for one another. This we ask in his name. Amen. For we remember that on the night on which he was betrayed, Jesus sat at table with his disciples. He took bread, he blessed it, giving thanks to God, and he broke it. He gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is for you. And in a like manner, after the supper, he also took the cup. He blessed it, giving thanks to God, and he gave it to them, saying, Take drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you now to partake of the communion elements. Holy One, we thank you for welcoming us to this table where we have been refreshed with bread and by the cup through the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We ask that you continue to bless us with your Spirit's presence as we move from this place and time into this week. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. 
My name is Mike Shaner. I've been a member of Webster Groves Christian Church for maybe two years now. I became a member because of my wife here, Delcia Carlu, who was a member for many years. And let me tell you just a little bit about myself. I've been a Christian my whole life. I grew up Catholic, Catholic grade school, Catholic high school, Catholic college. My whole life was being a Catholic. And we were taught that's even better than being a Christian in so many ways. Um, but when I got divorced, the Catholic Church turned their back on me and said I couldn't receive the sacraments because I was divorced. And so they were not welcoming, they were not affirming, and it really hurt a great deal. I taught management at St. Louis University for many years. And I taught about diversity and the differences in people. And you ask people, what are the differences? And they go, well, there's gender, um, there's age, um, there's background, there's all sorts of other things. There's so many things that make up diversity within our world today. And the world is becoming more and more complicated when it comes to diversity. I feel that anyone should be welcomed and being affirmed with Webster Groves Christian Church, that that would be what Christ would want. And if we are truly Christians, we don't turn our back on anybody. I grew up in England. I was a member of the Church of England. When I came to this country quite a few years ago, um, as an Episcopalian, um, I joined Webster Groves Christian Church. It has always been such a welcoming and affirming congregation. Um, it doesn't really matter what your background is. Everyone welcomes you and it just is a wonderful congregation. Memorial Boulevard Christian Church and Webster Groves Christian Church continue to advocate for the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are at work through prayer, proclamation, and presence, through learning and studying and praying together and teaching, and through sharing food and shelter. We need your help. We can't do this alone. We encourage you to continue to give to your local congregations, Memorial Boulevard Christian Church and Webster Groves Christian Church. Information about giving is on the screen. Holy and loving God, you come to us in the person of Jesus, who is bread for our lives, who is water for our thirst, who calls us to a life of discipleship and service, calls us to live in liberating love. We thank and praise you this day, O oh God, for the gifts that you give. We thank you for your Spirit's presence as we worship, for the lives and ministries of our two congregations, Memorial Boulevard Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and Webster Groves Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. We pray that you strengthen the mission and the ministry in which we are involved. We pray for our neighbors and friends. We pray for our nation, we also lift up to you, O oh God, many more. We pray today for Tierra and her family, for the family of George Fields as they grieve his loss and celebrate his life. We pray for Eva Motri, for Barbara Merrill, for Shirley Arthur as she continues to recover. We pray for Rosemary, for John, for James, for Sean, we pray for Evelyn. We pray for Arlene Sullivan as she continues to recover. For Martha and her family. We pray for Lola Wheeler. O oh God, hear our prayers for Tom Reese. For those suffering and fighting against the wildfires in California and in Greece and other places for those experiencing the terror of war in Afghanistan and many other places in the world. 
We pray for migrants, O God, those at our own southern border and so many around the world. And for those struggling with and against COVID-19, we pray, O God, that you open the hearts and minds of those who have not yet sought the care that they need, the vaccination that will help them. We pray for healing, and we pray for the physicians, nurses, clinicians, all of the workers in the healthcare system that are helping to fight this virus. We thank you, God, that you are a God of love, that you call us into the world, that we might share that love with others. We thank and praise you in the name of Jesus, our Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. And now, people of God, go forth from this place and time to walk by faith, assured that Jesus is indeed the bread of life, liberating, loving, longing, and calling us into the world. In the name of our God, who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. Amen.